The word cache is one of the most frequent when working with simulations in Houdini. I've set up a simple crowd simulation. I've modeled this running track and on that track I've drawn a curve. Then, in the simulation, I've used a pop steer path node to make my agents follow that curve. So when I run the simulation, the agents will follow the path on the running track. If I press play, you'll notice that the playback speed is a bit slower than what it's supposed to be. You'll notice too that there's a blue line down here in the timeline. Whenever we press play and run a simulation, Houdini calculates frame by frame the behavior of that simulation, and those calculations are stored in the RAM memory. It calculates frame 1 and stores the result in the RAM frame 2 and stores the result in the RAM, and so on until all the frames are calculated. If I go back to frame 1 and press play, you'll see that these frames will now be played back way faster than these ones that were not in blue. The frames in blue have been already processed and stored in the RAM, while those not in blue haven't been processed yet. That's why those frames are played back a bit slower, because they still have to be processed. This data that has been processed and is being read from the RAM is what we call cache. Depending on how complex your simulation is, these calculations will be done faster or slower. Crowd simulations are very light and shouldn't take long. But if you work with fire, fluids or cloth simulations in high resolution, each frame can take about 10, 20 seconds or even 5 to 10 minutes, of course, depending on your machine. Ok, once our simulation is ready and my agents behave as I want them to, what I have to do is take these agents out of the DOP net, because what we are seeing here is actually what's inside the DOP net. I have to take these agents out of the DOP net and put them in a geometry node, what Houdini calls SOPs. In other words, I have to move my agents from DOPs, the simulation level, to SOPs, the geometry level. And how am I supposed to do that? Let's go back to the OBG context and create a new geometry node that we are going to call crowdsim underscore cache or something like that. Enter the node and make sure you set the viewport to hide other objects so you don't see anything else. Now, to bring things from a DOP net to a geometry node, I have two options. I can use the DOP import node or the DOP import fields node. Let's start with the DOP import fields node. Display it? Ok. With the DOP import fields node, we can import specific fields from the DOP net. Let's go now to the DOP net, place the pointer on the output node and click on this icon here, Info. A new window will open with a lot of text, but what we want to focus on here is this line in white, crowd object 1. These lines in white are the objects we are using in the simulation. In this case, I only have one, this crowd object 1. And inside that crowd object 1, there is a field called states and another field called geometry. Close this window and go back now to the DOP import fields. In the DOP network parameter, I'll tell Houdini from which DOP net I want to import the data. I'll choose my crowd sim. Then, in the DOP node parameter, I can specify from which node in the DOP net I want to import the data. For now, I'm going to leave it empty, you'll see why in a moment. And now we go down to the fields to import. This is where we tell Houdini what specific fields we want to import. Click on the plus button to create a new line and you'll see your agents appear in the viewport.
if we leave this object parameter empty, we'll bring all the data of all the objects in the .NET. In this case, as I only have the crowd object one, that's the one I'm bringing. If I had more objects, like a terrain, a ground plane, or some rigid bodies for collisions, this node would be importing all those objects because, as I just said, if the object parameter is empty, it will bring by default all the objects in the simulation. And this field parameter, if we leave it empty, by default, it will bring the geometry field from these objects. That's why our agents are here, because the node is importing the geometry of all the objects in the simulation. That in my case, I repeat, it's just the crowd object one. Since I have only one object, I could leave these parameters empty. However, even though it's not necessary, it's good practice to fill in these parameters so we know what's going on. Say you open this project after a couple of months, you see these parameters empty and you have no idea what's happening. So we will specify that we want to bring the crowd object 1 and that we want its geometry. Of course, nothing will change in the viewport, but now we'll see the node and think, oh, okay, I know this is bringing the geometry from this crowd object one. Now, if I had put in the dop node parameter the crowd object one, this object parameter would not be necessary anymore because the node would already know that I want to import the fields from the crowd object one so I could leave the object empty. We have two options here. Either we use the dot node parameter to specify from which object I want to import the data and leave the object line empty, or we leave this parameter empty and specify the object down here. It's the same. Let's go now with the other node, the DOP import. This node does basically the same thing as the import fields, but has a few extra options. In the DOP network parameter, I'll choose my DOPnet, the crowd sim. And in the object mask is where I choose which specific object of the DOPnet I want to import. By default, it has a star, which means that it will bring all the objects in the simulation. As we said before, in my case, there's only one object, the crowd object one, so that's the one we'll bring. But you probably noticed that the node is throwing an error, and that's because the import style is set to transform input geometry. We are not connecting anything to the input. There's no input geometry, so I'm going to change this to fetch geometry from DOP network, because that is what we want to do. Now, yes, I'll see my agents back in the viewport. If I had more objects in my simulation, I would see all those objects here too. Then I could say in the object mask that I want to bring only the crowd object one. As you can see, this is exactly the same we had in the previous node. And down here in the geometry data path parameter, we put the name of the geometry field for that object, which it usually is geometry. If we leave it empty by default, the node will know that it should import the geometry field because that's how we usually call the geometry. But again, even though it's not necessary, it's good practice to fill it in so we better understand what the node is doing. Perfect! This is how we bring our agents from DOPS back to SOPS.